Hey, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Bolt City Podcast. Dave Palais, Josh Palais, Mario O'Haran, talking Charger football with you. Told you guys we'd be back in just a couple of days, especially if Austin Eckler said something dumb. And he did. And we'll get to it a little bit later on. All right. We're going to start off with a guest right away. And really excited to have him. Of course, we, we talk gambling lines all the time and what to look forward to on the Chargers and what the hot takes are. Mario threw a list at you just uh, a couple days ago. But Ryan Horvat right now from M- Bet MGM tonight. He's a co-host, and he joins us. We're going to talk a little Charger football and, of course, what's happening in the NFL of what to look forward to in the 2023 season. Ryan, really appreciate you joining us today. I appreciate you guys having me. I'm uh, jacked to come on. I told Mario I wanted to come on because I've been talking about the Chargers for like two and a half months. So first things first, guys. Uh, I've been sick of the NBA for about four and a half months. Like on our show, we're talking summer league. We're talking about like Joel Embiid's next team odds. All I want to talk about is college football. But more importantly, I've wanted to talk about the Chargers, who last season, I'm not going to lie, kind of bought in after all the free agent signings, all the moves they made. Obviously, they were a little bit of a letdown. But I think this year, man, if they stay healthy, I have high expectations. I love Kellen Moore taking over for Joe Lombardi because he's going to allow Justin Herbert to push the ball down the field with his cannon for an arm. I'm jacked for this season, man. So uh, also, I haven't mentioned yet, I'm a, I'm a Cubs fan, so baseball season's really been over for like the last 62 days. <laughs> I'm ready for right. charging the ball. Let me start off with the first question, guys, because he touched on a couple things right there that are right up my alley. All right, so Ryan, I said I'm picking because of Kellen Moore, I would bet Justin Herbert to win MVP this year. He was my pick to be my MVP choice. Am I crazy on that one? No, I mean, because this was my issue, you know, with the Joe Lombardi offense. Joe Lombardi, I keep joking, he was calling plays for Drew Brees, Drew Brees' final three seasons in New Orleans all over again. Like, when you have a quarterback like Justin Herbert with that kind of arm strength, you have to allow him to push the ball down the field. And I know that's easier said than done, you know, when you look at a lot of the weapons, and they struggle to stay healthy. Keenan Allen struggles to stay healthy. Mike Williams struggles to stay healthy. But I like this team, you know, Austin Eckler, I know you guys are going to get into him a little bit later on, but man, when he's right and he's healthy and he's motivated now to make some money, I know no running backs are getting paid. You know, he could catch 80 balls out of the backfield. He could still go off for double digit touchdowns, but more like what I love about this team this year, you continue to spend money on the offensive line. You have to protect Justin Herbert. You know, you know, nobody wants him to end up being the next Andrew Luck who couldn't stay healthy because they didn't protect him until it was way too late. But I really like the draft as well. I love Quentin Johnston out of TCU. You can play him most likely in the slot on probably most of those snaps. He's a burner. He has good size. If they stay healthy, I just think that there's way too much talent on the offensive side of the ball. And I love Kellen Moore. I know people kind of you know, fell out of love with him, I guess, in Dallas. We thought he was going to be the next big thing as a head coach. Who knows? Um, But I really like him. You know, I think he's really creative. I think what was going on there the last couple years in Dallas, there was almost this power struggle because you have to remember in Green Bay, Mike McCarthy was the play caller. So I think at times we saw the Mike McCarthy offense with Dak Prescott and that Cowboys offense. And at times we saw the Kellen Moore offense. I think here, you know, it's going to be his show, and Brandon Staley could just focus on the defense. Thank God. And uh, I'm excited for Cal Moore, you guys. So, Ryan, everybody here knows how good the Chargers are because we're Charger fans. Outside of you know Southern California, people are counting the Chargers out. They're putting them as the fifth, sixth best team in the AFC. Why do you think that is? Because, like you said, we have a good, we have a great quarterback, we have a great running back, we have great players all across the board on the team. Why do you think people are counting out the Chargers? It's a great question. I think, you know, you just think like historically the Chargers always find a way to Charger. I guess you go back to like Philip Rivers to Anthony Lynn. Even, you know, uh, when I was in high school, grade school, I was in love with this team when it was obviously like LT, Drew Brees, and then Philip Rivers takes over. You had Sean Merriman on the defensive side of the ball. They always had so much talent. They would win 12 games, uh, but something would always go wrong. You know, there was the AFC title game where Philip Rivers tears his ACL, tries to play through it. It's just, it almost seems like they're kind of cursed, um, you know, and then you look at the AFC, the problem in the AFC is it's just loaded and it's now more loaded than ever because you have Aaron Rodgers in New York, you know, everybody expects big things from the bills, the dolphins on the offensive side of the ball, they could score 30 plus points. We'll see what the defense looks like this season. And then in the division, you have the Kansas city chiefs and you have Patrick Mahomes, who is the greatest quarterback of all time, the, the defending Super Bowl champs. You have the Denver Broncos, who are kind of a wild card. They've been such a disappointment the last couple years, but now Sean Payton takes over. Russell Wilson did look a little bit better the last couple games of the season. I just think it's because the AFC is so loaded, and they've struggled to stay healthy. 
And I still think that there's people for whatever reason that don't believe in Justin Herbert. Like I was laughing last year when he was being called an internet quarterback or whatever, even in Oregon, like you could go back. I loved him at Oregon. You know, there are people that are like, it's the system, which I didn't understand. It wasn't the Chip Kelly system. So I didn't understand how you compared him to Dennis Dixon or Marcus Mariota. Like he's athletic. He can make every single throw. If you keep him healthy, that's the other thing. Like people forget about the chargers last season. Like, sure, um, J.C. Jackson ended up being a complete bust on the defensive side of the ball after some really good years in New England. You know, Joey Bosa struggled to stay healthy again. But if him and Cleo Mack can stay healthy, you know, I think they're two is still two of the best pass rushers. Um, I think J.C. Jackson could have a bounce back year. They have a bunch of talent on defense. It just comes down to staying healthy. Uh, but, yeah, I don't really understand why people aren't buying it. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. And I don't understand how you hate on Justin Herbert. The guy's the real deal. And, again, uh, what I was trying to say there week two, he got hurt. Like he had a devastating rib injury. I can't believe he stayed in that game. He shouldn't have, he shouldn't have played the next week. Let's see. Like if he could stay fully healthy, I think he could be the MVP of the league and they could win 12, 13 games and win that division. That's why I love them at plus three fifty. We got Ryan Horvath, the co-host of bet MGM tonight. Also the co-host of Kurt and long. If you are a weird person or a Packers fan, I feel bad for you, but Hey, <laughs> some people got to have some hard times in life. Um, so as you mentioned multiple times, like you're big on the Chargers. You got your ticket to win the Super Bowl. So I have two-part question for you. One, I'm going to try to convince you on another Herbert bet. And two, what is like the number one thing the Chargers need like to go right for them to get to that Super Bowl? Like the one thing that, you know, every run a uh, team has, they need that one thing taken out. The biggest thing I always think of is Raptors with Kawhi Leonard, NBA, but whatever. Durant gets hurt. That's their golden ticket. They win the title with Durant. Probably, hell no, that's not happening. So what do they need? And then second, can I interest you at a 7-1 to Herbert's most passing touchdowns ticket to lead the league? I, I really, really like that. It's been like – I've been looking my chops on a little bit, getting a little excited, had to change the pants a couple times. I love it a lot. Absolutely. Like th he's going to have a monster season with Kellen Moore. Again, he just has to stay healthy. And I hate to like have a cop-out answer here, but the Chargers just have to stay healthy. Really, like this is the case I keep making for the Chargers. I say look at every team in the league on paper. Like, take away that Cleo Mack's getting a little bit older, that Joey Bosa struggles to stay healthy, you know, that J.C. Jackson had a down year and had some weird off-the-field stuff. Everybody loved Brandon Staley a couple years ago. He was a great quote. Everybody loved that he went for it on fourth down, how aggressive he was. And then, you know, there was a rough year. Things didn't really work out. They still made the playoffs last year, mind you. And, like, people fell out of love. Also, like the weird thing is he's this defensive minded head coach. And I feel like every year they've kind of regressed defensively. But again, man, that comes down to they just haven't stayed healthy. I love Derwin James. If there's anybody, you know, in that division that could kind of hold their own against Travis Kelsey, it's Derwin James. You could have him shadow Travis Kelsey. I just think like on paper, there's way too much talent. They've just struggled to stay healthy. And I think that's what it comes down to, you know, in coaching. You know, if they don't win a Super Bowl here in the next three years, I think it comes down to Brandon Staley wasn't a very good head coach. You know, maybe Kellen Moore ends up becoming the head coach. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, I love the passing yards. I love the passing touchdowns. Because the other thing is, man, like even Austin Eckler, he's probably going to catch eight or nine touchdowns. You know, he's not like Derrick Henry. He's not this power back that you're going to use when you get into the red zone around the goal line. Um, and now you have Quentin Johnston, another weapon, who, again, I absolutely love. He could take the top off of a defense. Mike Williams has to stay healthy, obviously. The wide receivers have to stay healthy. That's what it comes down to, though, like with this team, man, is it's just health. It's health, and they have to take away the football. They're going to have to force turnovers, and you're going to have to have some good luck. Like you have to hope that Denver still stinks because that is a really good defense. You have to hope Sean Payton doesn't turn around that offense. I think the Raiders are going to be an absolute disaster. I have no idea when they, why they went out there and got Jimmy Garoppolo. The Raiders should have one goal. I mean, I didn't even understand. I love Devontae Adams. I think he's a top three wide receiver in the league. I didn't understand trading for Devontae Adams because you should be going full rebuild this year. If you were going to say goodbye to Derek Carr, why do you want a 31, 32-year-old wide receiver when this is the year to suck because Caleb Williams is coming out next year? And if you don't like Caleb Williams, Drake May is coming out uh, out of North Carolina. You know what I mean? Michael Penix is coming out. So it's a deep, loaded quarterback class. So I don't think the Raiders are going to be very good. It just comes down to like, you have to hope like maybe – there's a little bit of a Super Bowl hangover for the Chiefs. The Chiefs are always lights out the second half of the season. They always start out really slow defensively, but Spags is a very underrated defensive coordinator. They always figure it out. They're going to win double-digit games because of Mahomes.
but you have to hope for a little bit of a drop off, I guess, or a little bit of a Super Bowl hang hangover, and you have to stay healthy and actually live up to the hype and hope Brandon Staley, you know, just isn't a goof. You know, like I'm still that's what I'm worried. <laughs> Packers, man. Matt LaFleur won 13 games, three consecutive years with Aaron Rodgers. Last year, they stunk. Let's see what he is with Jordan Love. You know what I mean? I still don't know how, how good he is. We hype up all these guys, you know, and then it's like, oh, maybe they weren't that good. I remember when people loved Adam Gase and wanted Adam Gase, you know? Yeah. <laughs> all right. So you touched on, on the, the division a little bit because it's one of the w- ways I want to go. A year ago at this time, we were saying the AFC West – might be the most competitive division in the history of the NFL. You touched on exactly what I thought with the Raiders. If I was the Raiders, I would have completely tanked this year, meaning going, we're going to go with a no-name quarterback. We're going to trade Josh Jacobs. Might even trade Max Crosby, who I think is one of the, the best, most underrated players in the league. Love him. But if I'm the Raiders, I'm doing everything I can to get Caleb Williams. And I'm looking to get more and more first-round draft picks or whatever I can get for this few stars that you have. The one I would have kept probably would have been Devontae Adams because – you want Caleb Williams to be able to throw to somebody, but the Raiders aren't winning a Super Bowl this year, but you could set yourself up for maybe the next five to seven years by doing this right. So going into, you know, the division, we all know Casey's the best team in the league. It's frustrating for Charger fans that not only are you competing with a team in your league that's good, but maybe the best team in the NFL that's in the middle of a dynasty right now in Justin Herbert's years. How do you see the AFC West this year? Yeah, and the scary thing about Kansas City also is just what the betting market's telling you about them. They're the only team in the league this year that's favored in all 17 games. You know, the Eagles are in a weak NFC, and they're not even favored in all 17 games. But I do, I mean, like, you look at last season, Kansas City, like, over-exceeded expectations. We had people coming on our show, and I laughed. I bet the Chiefs last year to win the Super Bowl. Like, I was high on the Chargers. I thought they had a shot, a shot to win the AFC West, but I thought they kind of, like they were that young up and coming team. Maybe they had to take their bumps and bruises, but I liked the chiefs last year because everybody was writing off Mahomes, who I think is the best quarterback in league history, just because they traded away Tyree kill. And I like the moves that they made last season. You brought in Juju Smith Schuster, who is your underneath guy. And I know MVS isn't Tyree kill, but he was their deep threat down the field. Now that they lose Juju Smith Schuster, you know, like on paper, the chargers have a better wide receiver room. It just has to stay healthy, you know? And, I know you don't have Patrick Mahomes, but Justin Herbert's really, really good. You look at the Chiefs wide receiver room right now. I thought they should have went all in for D-Hop, to be honest with you guys. I know he's a little bit older, but Kadarius Toney, I guess, is your number one. You do have MVS. I know Travis Kelsey's still the real deal, but he's going to be, what, 35 years old? Um, So I like the Chargers to win the division. I think the Chiefs, I think both teams, though, you know, I think that the Chargers probably win 12, 13 games. That would be my prediction. I think the Chiefs probably went about 11 you know I think they finished second I do think that the Broncos could sneak into the playoffs you know let's see what Sean Payton could do with Russell Wilson he's looked really bad two years ago in Seattle he had a hand injury last year I just think Nathaniel Hackett really stinks which is funny because I believe in the Jets I believe in the Jets because I think Nathaniel Hackett only serves one purpose he's Aaron Rodgers gopher like if you watch 90s basketball He's the Aaron Rodgers, what Jack Haley was to Dennis Rodman. Like, he only has a job because of Aaron Rodgers. Like, that's why Denver hired him, right? They thought that they had Aaron Rodgers in the bag. He ends up going back to Green Bay, so they get Russell Wilson. But it's just going to be Rodgers running the show there. Um, But I think, man, with Sean Payton, with better play calling, the impressive thing about the Broncos' defense last year, you know, they were a top-five defense all year long, and the offense was so bad. It was just three and out after three and out. All those drives stalled. Um, At best, it was a field goal. And yet they still never gave up and still played hard all season long. So I think you might get three teams in the playoffs from the AFC West. I don't know that it's the best division in football. I think that's the AFC East. But I think it's going to be damn good. And I think you could get three playoff teams. And then you could get the Raiders, who could win five games, could win eight games. I don't think they're a playoff team, though. So, Ryan, we've seen the last few weeks all the running backs, all the top-tier running backs, Christian McCaffrey, Jonathan Taylor, Austin Eckler, speaking out about running backs and how much they're being paid. I think we all agree that running backs, you know, could be making more money for the value that they bring towards the team, but they are interchangeable. That's that's without a doubt. Are you annoyed when guys like Austin Eckler are so outspoken about their salaries? See, I'm not just because, like, with running backs, their shelf life, their shelf life is so short. You know, and I get it. I get it from both sides, right? Like, it's a violent position. 
And it's crazy because growing up, everybody wanted to play running back, especially like where I grew up because where I went to high school, they ran the double wing. Nobody, we never threw the ball. So if you were a running back, you were the star of the team. And like you grew up and you wanted to be Barry Sanders or you wanted to be Walter Payton. But everything started changing. And even like when I really started to pay attention, you know, I'll never forget Emmett Smith, the Cowboys win the Super Bowl. And then the following year, Emmett Smith wants a new deal. Jerry Jones doesn't want to give him a new deal because he just gave a new deal to Troy Aikman and Michael Irvin at the time, made them the highest paid players on the offense. Emmett Smith actually sits out the first couple games of the season. They start 0-2. He gets a two-year, three-year deal for like $12 million. And I was like, damn, running backs really make no money. And they're the stars of these teams. You know, they used to be top 10 picks. Now we don't see that anymore. So it doesn't really annoy me. I get it because it's such a violent game. Like these are our modern day gladiators. We sit on our ass on a Sunday. We drink beer, we eat chips, we eat pizza, and we watch them. So I'm, I want these guys to get paid, man, because like with brain injuries, with head injuries, I have buddies that played actually in the league that, you know, they're rich now. They made a lot of money, but man, everything's kind of a struggle for them right now. You kind of feel bad. So I want these guys to get paid. But I also get why they're not getting paid. Like, and I get why owners don't want to give these guys money because it's crazy. I was just talking about this. College football is so tough to replace a running back like a Deuce Vaughn or a B. John Robinson. But in the NFL, it's kind of plug and play, especially if you have a good offensive line. Nick Chubb's great, but the Browns have the best offensive line in all of football. You could probably stick somebody else back there and he could average three, four yards per carry. A good example is Jacksonville, James Robinson, a couple years ago. Like, he, I think he had most rushing yards ever by an undrafted rookie running back. Now he doesn't even have a team right now. The Patriots just cut him. I just I feel like if you have a good enough offensive line, you can stick anybody back there. And we see it, man. Like Todd Gurley made all that money after uh, the Rams went to the Super Bowl. The next year he had arthritis and he wasn't the same player. The year later he's in Atlanta. So you really don't want to commit all that money because now wide receivers want to get paid so much money. They're not even getting paid. Look at last year. Uh, you know what I mean? AJ Brown gets traded. Devonte gets traded. It's just quarterbacks are making so much money. I want to see where the league, what the league does with this, but it doesn't really annoy me, but I do get both sides. I get why you wouldn't want to pay an Austin Eckler, especially once these running backs hit 26, 27 years old. It used to be 28, 29, but man, like we don't see too many Adrian Petersons anymore. So I get not wanting to pay him. but guys like Austin Eckler really quick on that Austin Eckler, Aaron Jones, um, Camaro when he's not punching dudes in Las Vegas and getting suspended. They're really important, like McCaffrey, because they could catch 70, 80 balls out of the backfield. And that's what the league has now, or what the league's becoming. You know what I mean? It's a passing league. So I get it from both sides. It doesn't really bother me. I always think back to like when Jordan Howard, I think he broke like the single rushing record that Walter Payton had for the Bears. Like my dad's a Bears fan. He still like cries over Walter Payne every other damn day. And it's just yeah. like, dude, that guy is like not even in the league anymore. And that wasn't like too long ago. He was like on the Eagles and like rode the bench and was like the goal line guy. And then ate chips after it. Like it was just tough one, tough one for running backs, tough one to be one. Um, Ryan Horvat, big gambling guy, one of the best uh, handicappers in the business. Before we let you go, any week one bets, any future bets that you got that are just on fire in your pocket right now that you want to give out and all you listeners and, California, wherever the hell you are, if you want to bet, go to Ben MGM Sportsbook, the king of sportsbooks to do it. That's the best. And if you're in California, figure it out, man. VPN, go to a different state, do it, and then sprint back over, do what you got to do. So, Ryan, if you have any bets, week one, anything spicy you got, let us have it. All right. So, really quick, just I'm not saying this because uh, I'm coming on your guys' podcast, but like if you like somebody on the defensive side of the ball, defensive player of the year, Nick Bosa is an absolute beast. But let's just say Joey Bosa <laughs> stays healthy with a healthy Khalil Mack and could give us double-digit sacks, and the Chargers lit, win 12, 13 games. Wouldn't hate that. Wouldn't hate a Justin Herbert MVP bet. bet or, uh, or Justin Herbert to lead the league in touchdowns or passing yards, like you said. I really like those odds as well. I wouldn't play uh, Brandon Staley, Coach of the Year, uh, but I would play Matt Eberflus, Coach of the Year, at 11-1. to 1. If you like the Bears to win the NFC North, why well, bet them at 4-1 to 1 when you could bet Eberflus at 11-1? to 1. They have the worst odds to win the division. I'm not sold on the Lions, you guys, and Dan Campbell. I mean, not enough to lay minus 165 or whatever that price is in the NFC North. I think the Vikings are going to be a disaster. That defense is terrible. That was the only defense in the league that allowed Daniel Jones to throw for over 300 yards, not once, but twice, including in a playoff loss. Uh, I'm not really high on my Packers. I think their ceiling is seven wins. I don't know how bad, I don't know how good Jordan Love is, how bad he is, but I don't know how that defense was a huge letdown. Uh, so, 
I think the Bears might be the real deal. I mean, they're probably a year away, but I believe in Justin Fields. I do like DJ Moore. Uh, I like Mooney as a number two. I don't love Claypool, but if he's your three and you have Colt Komet at tight end and you fix up that offensive line a little bit and the defense is a little bit better, they might shock some people, win 10 games. As far as week one, I bet the Lions plus seven. That's down to six and a half. If that goes back to seven or seven and a half, everybody's going to bet the Chiefs on that Thursday night opener. I do think Detroit might keep that game competitive. The Chiefs struggle to cover big numbers, and all Detroit does is cover numbers. Uh, I actually like Indianapolis to cover the three and a half week one against Jacksonville. These two teams, it's a divisional matchup. They always play each other tough. I think the Jags probably win that conference, win that division by default because it's not very good. And they do add Kelvin Ridley to a pretty good offense. But uh, Indianapolis, at least week one, I think they're going to be able to run the ball with Jonathan Taylor healthy. We'll see if Anthony Richardson starts. There's a whole side of the field he can't throw to, but he could use his leg. <laughs> <laughs> so I think they're going to keep that game close. And it's week one, so crazy stuff always happens. And then my favorite bet, the number's done, uh, gone, I should say. But I like the Jets. One and a half point dogs at home Monday night, September 11th against the Bills. I like the Jets to win the division. I like the Dolphins to finish second. I think the Bills might miss the playoffs. There's my hot take for you guys. I don't love Ken Dorsey. I think they really dropped off without Brian Dayball. I think the reason the offense looks so good, if you go back and you watch those games last year, on early downs, they sucked. It was just Josh Allen becoming Superman on third downs. They converted it like a 60% clip. That's not sustainable. Stephon Diggs is pissed off. He wants more of a say in the offense. Gabe Davis didn't make that year three, year four, whatever it was, leap after that huge playoff game. I know he did have a high ankle sprain. And then defensively, they're solid, man. But last year, second half of the season, they had no pass rush. Von Miller's older, and he's coming off another injury. You know, another injury. Micah Hyde's coming off a neck injury. Jordan Poyer, you do bring back. Like, they were beat up last year. So I worry a little bit about the Bills. I think they could be an eight, nine win team, maybe miss out on a loaded uh, – AFC playoff uh, tree. So there's there's my takes for you, Mario. All right, Ryan, before you go, and I already know the answer. I can tell by the way you just answered that last question, but you got to say it out loud for this oh, show yeah. because it got heated on the show last one we did. We made a bet on the show. It was those two guys against me. I, my hot take was the Titans have more wins this year than the New York Jets. And, uh, and, and you got to say it out loud. Who are you taking? Who has more wins at the end of the season, the Jets or the Titans? Oh, man. All right. So I'm going to take the Jets because I think the Jets surprise everybody win 13 games, live up to the hype. This hard knocks crap scares the hell out of me. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> really? Anytime, anytime anybody doubts Aaron Rodgers, that's when I buy in. I sold on the Packers last year, you guys. I bet the Vikings, who I absolutely hate more than anything on this planet, to win the division because I liked Kevin O'Connell year one in that offense. You know what I mean? They had Zadarius Smith. But, like, Rodgers wasn't motivated. Now he looks great. He's in great shape. People are saying he's washed. He's coming off one of the worst seasons, if not the worst season of his career. But, dude, if they get Brees Hall back, I know most running backs don't look like themselves year one post-ACL injury, except for, like, Jamal Charles and Adrian Peterson. But he's the real deal. I think Garrett Wilson, to win Offensive Player of the Year, is a good bet. I think the Jets are going to live up to the expectations. But don't sleep on the Titans, especially now with D-Hop. Like, I, I didn't understand it at first because, you know, this offseason they were trying to trade uh, Derrick Henry. They couldn't, which makes sense. He's 29 years old. Three of the last four years, I believe, he's led the league in rushing attempts. But there was no market for him. Tannehill's 35 years old. There's no market for him. So you're on the hook for these guys. Why not go, I guess, in one more time with this core? Because Rabel's a great coach. You lose Robert Woods and Austin Hooper. You bring in D-Hop. You were 30th last year in passing yards, 28th in passing touchdowns. They only threw 16. But, like, if you look at it, they have the ninth easiest schedule in the league. They have the fourth best net rest advantage. They play four games, I believe, with rest advantage. And Vrabel's a really good coach, and they had some bad luck last year. They were 5-6 and six in one-score games. They lost more guys due to injury on the defensive side of the ball than any team in the league. If they could stay healthy, I know we're all hyped up about the Jags and Trevor Lawrence. Who knows, man? The Titans might win 11, 12 games and shock everybody because that's what Vrabel does, and they're always best in the underdog role, I feel. So I don't hate your take, but I'm going to go with the boys and roll with the Jets. There you go. You're Ryan. a dumbass, Dave. <laughs> Ryan, I really appreciate your time. That was awesome, man. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for having me, guys. Go Chargers. That was cool. That was uh, Ryan Horvat right there. Again, co-host of Bet MGM tonight. 
uh, does a fantastic job on Odyssey, and uh, we're, we're happy to have him. That, that was really cool. I enjoyed having him on. A lot of energy right there, and he knew a lot more about the Chargers than I thought. Didn't like what he had to say about Bosa, but again, I hope I'm wrong on Bosa. <laughs> Everyone says I'm too tough on Bosa. I get it all the time. Now I'm getting a lot of you're too tough on Austin Eckler. And so yesterday, guys, between shows, we, we did a show. We had a, a day off, then we came back, and we did another show. And I, I said when we ended, I go, we'll be back sooner if Austin Eckler says something dumb. For me, it's dumb, <laughs> okay? And here's here's the deal. We all saw what happened. Yesterday, I think, for, even for me, guys, was a little bit of a surprise. And I, I've been one of those to tell you, it's the running back position. It is what it is. And it's kind of what Saquon Barkley said. So we all expected Barkley to sign a deal with the Giants on Monday. He did not. And then Josh Jacobs doesn't sign his deal and then all of a sudden it comes out, you know, Pollard d- doesn't get a deal. And now you have three major running backs where you're going, OK, what is the situation with these guys? And of course, they will be franchise tagged. And then what will happen is they will become uh, re- free agents the following year and they're all going to be available. You just heard Ryan say that Derrick Henry was shopped. Nobody wanted him. It's what the position is. OK, so two things on this. One is everything he touched on is, is kind of stuff we've touched on. Here's why it's a bad position. And I blame moms. I blame moms for the running back being a bad position. Okay. Not a popular take to usually attack mothers. But I'm attacking mothers right here. And it's all those moms that go to those youth football games and those high school football games who make a big deal and scream, that's my baby, when they're scoring touchdowns at a lower level. Okay. That's your baby. I got it. Right now, he's the star when he's a kid not getting paid. Okay. He's just the star of the neighborhood because he scores seven touchdowns a game. Maybe getting paid. There are some bets that go on in those stands. We all know. But I blame the mothers because you got to have the ball in your hands, baby. You got to make mama proud. And guess what? They score all those touchdowns and they go to the grocery store and everybody's talking about that kid in the neighborhood. I got it. But you know who they don't talk about? They don't talk about that left tackle. And they don't talk about that cornerback. And they don't talk about that linebacker. They don't talk about that quarterback because they aren't the ones that score all the touchdowns. Here's the deal. The position doesn't pay a lot. It's just what it is because they're interchangeable. He just told you. Ryan just said, at 27 years old, your career is basically done. You graduate college at 22. You get five years in the league, and your career is over. Now what are you going to do the rest of your life? You didn't make a ton of money. It's interchangeable. Todd Gurley, MVP, it's done a year later. It is what it is. And I'm sorry, Austin Eckler. I'm a fan because you do things and you bust your ass every single weekend. But, man, no one cares. You made $30 million. Nobody wants to hear about your hardships. You made $30 million. You surprised everyone. Go talk to Melvin Gordon because he used to be his backup. And guess what? He was interchangeable. And it's just what it is. And in a few years from now, because what the NFL does, in five years, people are going to go, who was that running back for the Chargers who scored all those touchdowns? And you're going to look around and go, it's on the tip of my tongue. I should know his name. Guess what? You're going to be forgotten, Austin. Within five years, people around the league are going to forget you even played in this league. So enjoy it. Take the money. They gave you a million and a half dollars to shut the hell up, even though you already had a contract, which they should have never given you because you already agreed to a deal. And now that you're going to sit there and keep running your mouth, we're tired of it. Nobody wants to hear about your hardships when you have $30 million in the bank. Enough. Yeah. I Going back to what you said about Joey Bosa and Austin Eckler, you, you don't like him for different reasons. You don't like Joey Bosa because he doesn't perform. Exactly. Um, and Austin Eckler does perform, but he talks about his contract off the field. Too I much. agree with you. It's the whole Scottie Pippen thing with the Chicago Bulls. But you signed the contract. Now you got to live with it. I understand that you're getting screwed money wise. So are the rest of the running backs. Just play. All right. Just you're not going to make anybody happy by talking about how much you hate making money. Somebody put it in great terms today. Austin, you're talking to guys that make on an average of sixty thousand dollars a year. You're making millions. We're not sympathetic yeah. towards you not making money. If you want to talk to Derrick Henry and Christian McCaffrey and Jonathan Taylor about getting screwed and your private messaging, 100% go for it. But me and all the rest of the average fans are not making that type of money. So I just do not want to hear it anymore. I I completely get it. I completely agree. It's like when you see someone complaining about making what, – what's he make? I think he's $10 million this year. What's he officially it's, it's making more than, this year? I think, I think it's like 11 and a half, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, just hint at everybody. Odyssey's not throwing that money this way. So, I, yeah, it is hard to be, like, sympathetic towards that, um, especially when you're saying this to a audience, like you said, Josh, that's, like, not even making close, like, what, like, average 50 to 60K a year. Like, it's hard to sit there and feel bad for this person. On the flip side, I get it in terms of, 
if I'm Eckler and I am so freaking good at what I do and I am available and I play and I score and I pick up on what is left off from guys that can't play, I'm a little pissed. That $4 million between me and the next guy that he makes, it's a lot of money. And NFL stands for not for long. You want to get your money in that short year span and get ready for the life that comes after it. Get ready to take care of the future health bills you're going to have from playing this sport and that knee surgery you might need at 50 and that, you know, um, help you might need with your arm at 55, like foot problems, everything like that. You got to get your money. You got to prepare for that. If you have a family, you have kids. Sometimes you have, you know, parents that you're supporting. You have aunts and uncles you're supporting. I, it's a lot on the docket that you're putting on your back. And to know to the degree that you perform at versus what you're getting paid, yes, it is 10 times and it's a lot of money to a lot of people in the United States, including us three here. But to them, it is, I want to be paid for what I'm worth. And when you look at for what I'm worth, I'm not getting paid that for that. I very much understand. Go down on social media. Look, I get it. It's, it's you know, you want to speak out against it to help the next guy coming through. But at the same time, I do think there are better ways to go about it than like problems are going to get fixed on social media. If, if you think they are, you're a numb nuts. You're an idiot. Like they don't. So like if you're going to, if you want to help all the running backs, do it in other ways, find another way. Um, it, but it's a crazy situation going on, and I know I get both sides. Okay, look, here, here's the, I agree with what Josh says. If you want to have something to say and you want to start something up, do it privately with the other guys who are upset in the same boat as you. I talked to a charter season ticket holder this morning who was telling me how much he's paying for parking. Okay, and he's worried about parking, so he's like, "Hey, I'm going to give the Chargers my money, and I'm going to dedicate my time to going to all these Charger home games, and and I put money aside to go, but parking's going to cost me this amount of money, and it, it's an enormous amount of money just to park your car to watch Austin Eckler. So again, you aren't relating to the fans. So if you're going to sit there and complain to the fans, you're you're talking to the wrong audience. It doesn't work that way. You know, you should complain to. You should complain to Joey Bosa because he's the one that's taking up the salary cap. You know, you should complain to you should complain to Justin Herbert because he's the one that's going to be taking up the salary cap. In the NFL, on a roster of 53 guys, only five to six players actually get paid. Otherwise, guys aren't making real money like professional athlete, top tier money. And don't compare it to the NBA. It's a whole different it's a whole different thing. It's what the NFL is. And look, you want to complain again? Blame your players union rep. We say this all the time. The NFL Players Union is the worst in all the sports. It's ridiculous. It's, but yet it's the only sport where your life is cut short because you choose to, to play this job. Where the average NFL player dies before that the average man. It, or or they, they can't walk or, or whatever else they have, arthritis or brain injuries. But you're the one that agreed to do this. And if, if unless Austin Eckler can produce the clip of him having a gun held to his head while he signs that contract, there is zero sympathy for me at all on what he does for a living. And that's just that's where I'm at. And I will say exactly what Ryan said. Look, man, those guys are gladiators. I'm sitting in front of that TV every single week watching the Chargers play, and I'm eating the worst foods ever. And I'm having a blast doing it. It is like the gladiators, and I am just sitting there and enjoying it. Whether guys get hurt, whether they die, whatever else, I am here for the entertainment. And that's that's why I'm here over and over, and so are the rest of you. And it sounds horrible to say that way, but ratings are through the roof because we are all here for the entertainment. We just don't want to hear you complain about it. You agree to this contract. Don't sign it if you don't agree to it. So the difference here with Austin Eckler is he's a running back that can play receiver, but he's not really a receiver. Out of all the running backs last year, he was 17th in yards per reception. He had a ton of catches, 107, 17th in yards per reception. Debo Samuel is a receiver that can play running back, right? The opposite of Austin Eckler. He's making $23 million a year. You know why? Because he's getting way more yards per reception. He's stretching the ball down the field. Austin Eckler is the guy you dump the ball down to in the Joe Lombardi offense. That's not really giving you wins, right? Debo Samuel is the guy that's going to stretch the field and get you those get, get you those wins. That's the problem here. If Austin Eckler's argument back to the Chargers is, I can play receiver. Well, dude, you're in the hundreds when it comes to yards per reception. You're talking about all the players in the league, and you're 17th amongst running backs. So I don't think he has a very good argument on why he should be getting paid more. My, just my opinion. I, the availability, I'm 
could be a big help for him. Like I, I've been available. You know what I'm saying? I think that's like a huge thing. It's like it's not like but Barkley missed a ton of time with the Giants. You know, like he did. It's like when it comes to and then Alvin Kamara. I mean, he punches punches people in public all the freaking time. Like he gets hurt. He's been missing a lot of time. So I, in that situation, I kind of get the echo where I'm a little mad, going, "Yeah, I've been available though." And I think Derek. I mean, Derek Henry got his deal, which kind of shocked the world. And you know, it, it's just a tough. Tough situation. I saw something on Twitter today where, again, it's like one of those where, like, you just want – you're like, dude, I mean, how stupid can you be? People are like, take the money you pay kickers and give it to the running backs. Numb nuts. There's 32 spots for kickers. Every team has one kicker on roster. That's it. That's it. Numb nuts. Every team has one running back, right? There's usually three running backs on the roster. There's usually three to four running backs on the roster – and or that money just is like, it just doesn't really work like that. So like, it's a very fluctual position. You know, people come in, people come out. It's just what it is. And it just sucks too. Cause every draft class, there is a new stud running back. Like there just is James Robinson was a stud. Kenneth Walker was a stud. Darren Montgomery was a stud. There's always a new one. Uh, John Robinson going to be a stud. Guess what? His freaking backup is going to be a stud in the NFL too at Texas. Um, Gibbs is the stud from Bama. Dude, that guy's going to be a freaking beast on the Lions. And guess who's sharing that backfield with? David Montgomery. Like, it's just, look, it is what it is. I think Jamal Williams was, what, top five in touchdowns this past year? It was one-yard touchdowns. So, like, it, like, is that fluctuated? It's a position in a tough spot. Um, The money's going up, but, you know, if you're a GM, you're going to invest in QB, you're going to invest in a line, you're going to invest in – I'm interested, gentlemen, if this starts happening to receivers – because, like I mentioned, there's new talent every year coming up in running backs. Dude, there's new talent coming in every year for receivers. Like, that could also get a little lower. But like, dude, why would we pay Devontae Adams this money when I got this six t- this 22-year-old coming from USC that I'm like, holy hell on. So I think it, I'd be interested to see if it's like wide receivers that kind of slowly starts to happen too as well. That's an interesting one because we're seeing more receivers lately. They're able to make the jump from college to the NFL and have impact years where there are a number of years where you see this guy who was a camp miss and then all of a sudden he'd go to the NFL and he was terrible. That's the Detroit Lions and Matt Millen who drafted four of them in a row and none of them turned out well. You know what I mean? There were a lot of guys that it seemed like the hardest position to draft, right? I mean, it's like, what what the hell's going on here? How come none of these guys can do it? Um yeah, it, it's one of those where I think, honestly, I think the pressure goes back to the quarterback. And the quarterback's the one that controls the majority of the salary cap for almost every NFL team. And and it, it is what it is. I mean, you know, you have guys like Tom Brady who took less for years. You know, Tom Brady was never the highest paid guy in the league. He took less. The thing with Tom Brady, he got fooled all the time by saying, hey, Tom, if you take less, we can afford a Wes Walker. Oh, deal. Wes Walker's my guy. Oh, that's weird. You just released Wes Walker. <laughs> what happened to my money and what happened to my player? They did it to him all the time, you know, and Danny Amendola. I'm going to take less so they can keep Danny Amendola. Oh, that's weird. You just cut him too. Where's my money? Okay, but it, it did probably help. Time. It did probably help. He had so much endorsement money and his wife yeah, at the time that, was like that's a, different. But 500 that, that, million a year. Cool. But again, that that's different. When you talk about wanting to be appreciated, when you're by yeah. far the best, I mean, you're the GOAT. You're the best ever and you are never the highest paid guy. I mean, Jordan, for years, people always talk about the money Jordan made. Jordan made like $2.5 million. Jordan was undercut forever when he was with the Chicago Bulls. And then, he, remember, he got furious when they brought in Tony Kukoc. There's yeah. always, know what money shows you? Money shows you it's what you're worth. And, and that's your value. And Jordan and Pippen and all those guys, just using them as examples. But staying in the NFL right now, it's the salary cap is taken the majority by these NFL quarterbacks who are in the range now, 50 and $60 million a year. And it's crazy. And people go, well, what do you mean you're, you're going to you know, complain about that? I will say this on why those guys deserve that money. Call me, call me nuts. You guys can argue with me right now. There are 32 quarterbacks in the league that have these jobs in the world. And even out of those 32, maybe 10 are actually good in the world that do this or, or extremely great, I should say. Right. Because there are 22 guys where you could throw those guys away, but it is such a hard position in professional sports that, you know, I don't know. Josh, you you played the position. I'll say there are seven great ones in the world, seven in the entire world that can play that position at, at a high level every single week. 
Yeah, I think the example here is the San Francisco 49ers, right? Debo Samuel, Christian McCaffrey. Without Brock Purdy, they were a mess, right? They had no chance of winning that game. So that's the argument right back there. If you want to talk about quarterbacks not being valuable, you got to look at yourself in the mirror. They're obviously the most valuable player on the team by a mile. I want to get into some of the stuff on social media to get your guys' opinion. Have you guys looked into the Asante Samuel versus Darrell Rivas beef on Twitter at all? Go ahead, fill us in. I I was following yeah. last week. I saw, I saw they're like subtweeting each other, which shout out to like 2016 that that's still going on. <laughs> Happy for that. <laughs> All it is is Asante Samuel Jr. or not Jr. Asante Samuel Sr. going after Darrell Rivas, saying I was the better cornerback. Uh, you're not that great. I follow the best receiver around. Just basically saying how Darrell Rivas didn't get interceptions and he wasn't that great of a player. First question is, do you like when people argue on Twitter about these things? And second. Darrell Rivas is obviously the best, better corner than Asante Samuel. Number one, I'm always here for the entertainment. Two, yeah, Rivas was better. I mean, Rivas had a line in that argument, that, as far as I remember, a week ago when he said, baby, I'm first ballot Hall of Famer. And he is. <laughs> I mean, he is. There, there are a few cornerbacks that you go, that guy was a difference maker. And when you cut off half the field, which Rivas did, He's a difference maker, man. I mean, for me, I'd put, uh, I'd say Dion was the best corner I've ever saw, and I'd say Rivas is probably number two. Uh, on July eighteenth, two thousand and twenty-three, or two thousand and forty-three, or two thousand whatever, working in sports, please beef on social media. Get deep with it. Cut deep. Find out something about their mom. I don't know, man. Like, get, I don't know. Go for feelings. Go for the throat a little bit. Don't shy away from getting personal. Um, because it's something for us to talk about. You know, like I, I love that stuff. I think it's funny. Um, I think it's entertaining. And the, the fact of not like, I've, Josh, didn't they like not even like tweet at each other either? Like they had to like go to their accounts and like find it. Yeah, yeah. That's yep. even better. I love that. Like, don't tweet at them. Just make sure they find it. You know, find it through the likes. Find it through. Whatever the hell the Twitter algorithm is now, uh, yeah, and Revis was better. But I just like I like to smack talk. Yeah, why not talk smack? Put it out on the table, whip it out. You know, do what you got to do. <laughs> I just think it's crazy, man. When you got these older guys going after each other years after they played, I don't think yeah. anybody would say Asante Samuel was better than Darrell Revis. And to say that interceptions is the reason you're better, everybody knows if you're great, you're not getting the ball thrown your way. So I just thought it was funny. If I'm Asante Samuel Jr. on the Chargers, I'm like, Dad, can you please stop talking? You're driving me nuts. I, that, <laughs> that It's one of those things that's over, too. I mean, it's nothing like you yeah. can do tomorrow to increase your resume. It's it's absolutely over, and Revis's resume is uh, pretty insane. Um, before we get out of here, guys, uh, and we have a ton to talk about, so we have a lot left over for the next show. But uh, Mario brought this topic up, and, and it, it's never fun to play, but we're each going to name two things that if they go wrong for the Chargers, it changes the entire season. And then we're going to take out Justin Herbert getting hurt because obviously you take out any starting quarterback, it changes the entire season. Um, two things, guys, that stand out to you that you go, this is what I'm concerned about. Go first, Mario. All right, uh, two things. I'm happy you said took out the Herbert injury one because I was I was like, I'm not going to choose that one because that's he's, he needs one. So happy we're taking that out. First up, the Denver Broncos reach their potential. I think that's like the worst. If the division becomes a three-team race, that is a huge, huge, huge problem. Um, Horvat mentioned it. He thinks the AFC East is the best. There's, I agree. you know, yeah. There's obviously you can say that, and not like people would agree with you. Um, that division's obviously a three-team race. Having two divisions being three-team races leads to not a lot of playoff spots and leads to you better just win the freaking division and not worry about anything else. You know, that's the easiest way to get in the playoffs. Just winning a division. It's the easiest way. Um, they do that. That makes it 10 times harder. That could lead to the chargers, you know, not sweeping the Broncos. It'd be in a split or Chargers get swept. If they reach their potential, it could lead to a very long future. And that title window that we always talk about being really, really short and being just not, even maybe even there and having to make even more moves in free agency going, we got to do something to catch up with Denver and, you know, even KC. Um, and the only thing that worries me too, is when I looked at Denver's schedule, they could usually start the year four now home against the Raiders home against the commanders. I think at Miami, it's going to be a hard game, but like, I'm not going to like rule them out of not winning that. 
and then at Chicago, like Bears aren't very good, Commanders suck, Raiders blow. That they could start four and zero easily right there. So that's my number one. Number two, this is definitely gonna like a funny one. I just thought this was funny to say, and I actually do agree with it. Uh, Eckler gets hurt. Um, back to back seasons of eighteen or more touchdowns on the year. If we lose that production of that many touchdowns with a not strong running back room that we know of, um, that could be that could really really hurt the Chargers and potentially really take away one side of the game plan on the offense where we just fully have to go on air. Mike Leach, rest in peace, but just throwing the freaking ball until his arm, Herbert's arms fall off. <laughs> In front of Mike Leach. Good God. All he, right. He, was like, he loved passing the ball. I, I got it. It's too soon. Yeah. Too I'm soon. not making fun of him. I literally said rest in peace. <laughs> you act like I'm like torching say, the guy. But just because you say rest in peace doesn't mean it's okay. I'm showing too respect soon. to him. <laughs> he wasn't in his 90s. He died young. I know, two months like, ago. And he, he air raid, and he always threw the ball, and it was like it was fun to watch. And he had he was a genius in the passing game. Okay, <laughs> okay, you go ahead, we, Dave. All right, I will go ahead. I will go ahead. By the way, I think last show we did, Mario, yeah, was the first show where you didn't make a, a Jesus reference that we ever did. There, there's no Mother sure Mary, there's no Jesus. I don't think you did. I think it was the first one. I didn't sneak in a praise be. <laughs> I don't think there was a praise be in there. I think it was, uh, it was, it was, it was a, mo- a monumental show. <laughs> that's Let it come. I, think well, it I didn't go to church than... on Sunday, so maybe that's why. <laughs> okay, it was bigger than Lou Gehrig not playing a game that you <laughs> actually did not say anything. All right, here are my two, uh, my two things that go bad for the Chargers that would be a disaster. One is, what if J.C. Jackson's really that bad? What if last year wasn't rare? What if J.C. Jackson is garbage and the Chargers are now stuck with a cornerback that is so highly paid, but yet you're you're stuck and it ruins your salary cap? Two, what if Khalil Mack really is that old? What if that was his, his last best year and he's not going to have a, a Khalil Mack type of year and there is no pressure or strong football from Khalil Mack? That would be a disaster for me. Those two guys that are letting the defense down would put the Chargers in a bad spot because you have one guy that's making a tremendous amount of money in J.C. Jackson that's going to want to be on the field even though he doesn't deserve to be on the field, which causes locker room problems. And then you've got Khalil Mack where he might be in a situation where he knows it's over, but the Chargers don't have any options to play somebody else that could, could fill that role. So for me, those would be the two bad things that would happen. Okay. I mean, both you guys are spot on, I think. The two that I have is Corey Lindsley center because without him, I think the Chargers team is completely different. I hate the depth that we have on the offensive line. I really do like the starting offensive lineman, but besides that, I don't think there's much there. And then Keenan Allen. We saw last year without Keenan Allen how we could not convert on third down. He is the safety blanket. He was like the Antonio Gates for Phillip Rivers. Just throw it over there, and he's going to help you out. Without Corey Lindsley and Keenan Allen, I think this team's a mess. I was going to go Derwin James, but we saw how the Chargers were actually not that terrible without him, which was shocking. So I think for me, it's going to be on the offense. Corey Lindsley and Keenan Allen. And to be honest with you, it would have been Austin Eckler, number one. I just want to copy Mario. Not addressing the backup running back situation with the Chargers makes zero sense to me, considering Austin Eckler gets hit more than anybody in the league. So that if he Austin Eckler gets hurt, I think we're screwed as well. Yeah, I'm telling you what, I'm still a believer that I wouldn't be surprised to see Ezekiel Elliott join the Chargers. They Just say he's going back to the Cowboys. Is that what you're hearing? See, now if you're the Cowboys, why would why would you do that? Why would you do that to Pollard? And you know what I'm saying? Why would you give Pollard the, the job and then have him look over his shoulder the whole time knowing I was holding this guy's luggage and now he's supposed to be holding mine? Why would you create I, that in the locker room? I think last year it was pretty clear that it Pollard's Pollard's spot. Like I thought last year was like the cement. I thought head. the last two years Pollard was a better player, but they, they yeah. didn't give him the, the the time that he deserved because of Jerry's connection to Ezekiel. I don't know. Just my opinion. I would not bring him back just for chemistry in that locker room. But that that screw the Cowboys. I hope I hope it's a disaster. But I, you do need a backup. I'm with Josh. He's been saying it forever, man. Josh Kelly is not the answer. Mm-mm. No. You know, not no. not at all. Not at all. Maybe. All right. Yeah, maybe. All right. We'll be back. We've got a ton of stuff to talk about. Charger football training camp opens up, guys, in about a week. So yeah. uh, this is where it gets good. This is uh, this is the time of the year where it seems like we finish out the second half of the calendar year and we get uh, extremely excited because the NFL is coming back. And, and uh, again, want to thank Ryan Horvat for joining us. That was a lot of fun. I would have loved to ask him 
couple college football questions, but we we took a lot of his time. Mario, about to say something? Yeah. What real quick with training camp coming around? What's your guys' favorite part about training camp on social media wise? Like, what do you think the Chargers will post first? Because it's always you know you gotta get that you gotta gas some guys up. So you have like the you have the QB, you have Herbert walking in. I bet they post one thing of Quentin Johnson like catching a pass because you gotta pump up the rookie. And then, like, who else do you think? Well, it's funny. I'd say the first thing you see is going to be Herbert throwing a Quentin Johnson. That's the, that's the first, that's thing, first you're, thing you're going to see. 100%. has to be. You can't lose. You can't lose. Yeah, I bet you're in the marketing game. business. With the Madden? Be like, <laughs> <What'd you> he <laughs> was like Duran James with the Madden since he was number one safety in the league. Like, they walk in, and it's like, who's number one safety in the league? And then it's Duran James. And they're like, oh. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. We're gonna uh, we're gonna get in all that stuff the next show. We're gonna go into some of these Madden rankings because I, yeah. I actually I think Madden does a pretty good job of it on what they think. We'll go through some of the Charger roster guys. Some of the answers might surprise you. Also, uh, we did the NFL executives who uh, broke down the running back situation. They, they broke down the quarterback situation as well, which uh, mm. I think will surprise you. There, there's uh, someone in the top five that really surprised me. And then at the same time, we'll let you know where Justin Herbert's at. But we got a lot of Charger football to talk with you, of course, not only the next show, but the rest of the year. We want to thank you again for watching on YouTube and, of course, listening to the Odyssey app. Uh, our thanks to Ryan Horvat again as a guest today and uh, Bolt City Podcast right there, courtesy of Odyssey. So for Josh Pele, Mauro Heron, I'm Dave Pele. We'll talk to you next time. And subscribe or you hate your family. <laughs>